Well, good morning and welcome to Shilpa Shah, who is the Chief Executive of the North, North East London um, LPC. So a very big warm welcome uh, to you this morning. These uh, podcasts that we're currently uh, recording are around women who've been successful or who are currently successful, who found that um, leader within themselves that maybe they didn't even think they had in the first instance. So we will be just having a, a conversation this morning about how you got to where you are and some of the key learnings along the way, if that's OK. So welcome. Thank you so much for having me on, Linda. It's a pleasure. So perhaps you could um, share with us how you got to, to where you are and uh, the path that you've taken. Yeah, I think for me, um, I've always been, um, well, I've always been described when I was younger as bossy because mm -hmm. I'm organised, I like to lead things, I like to sort of be in charge, I suppose. And it is really funny because actually I've been doing a lot of thinking about the word bossy and how, you know, in the female kind of world, bossy is uh, seen as a negative. But actually, perhaps if I had been male and uh, doing the same things, they'd have been like, oh, look at that person. Like, you know, they're so assertive and one day they're going to be like a CEO. I'm not quite sure that that's what was said about me when I was younger um so for me I kind of you know it, it, to be honest leadership has always been there but I think um what I was really lucky with is I chose uh, pharmacy as a career pathway simply because actually you know my parents worked really hard in their own business um, and their aim was for me and my sister to both um, get a degree in a, in, a, in a vocation so that we were um we always had a job we had a job that was uh, meant to be work-life balance friendly not, not always quite like that um but also that you know we weren't having to work some of the hours that they they were having to work so um i think that's why you know uh, traditionally most asian families go for kind of um um in my day anyway accountancy optometry dentistry like healthcare type sort of professionals um so i thought of pharmacy because i loved working in my mum and dad's um retail business and thought right I can do pharmacy and be part of the community. Um, yep, yeah, so I went off to do um, a degree in pharmacy. And then um, for pharmacy, you have to do a year's pre-registration um, under the supervision of another pharmacist. Um, and I did mine in Boots. And I think the store manager, who was also the pharmacist, really recognised that I enjoyed the management side of things. So I was really lucky that not only did I spend that year learning clinical, but he really helped develop and guide me on sort of all the operational and management things that I may need in my future career. Um, and from there, I then became a um, store manager, a store leader, um, and just worked my way up the ladder sort of to get to where I am now. So this person who helped you, what was it they helped you find within yourself that enabled you to know you could do it? I think it was confidence. Um, you know, when you come out of university, you're quite new, you're quite young. You're also um, in, in when you're doing sort of a study year where you've got exams at the end of it, you're kind of trying to balance maybe working full time with studying, knowing that you've got an exam at the end that you need to pass to, to qualify. Um, and but for me, I was always sort of trying to sneak out of the dispensary to go off and sort of talk to one of the assistant managers about kind of the rotor or to see if, you know, I could sit in on a return to work if someone's been off work and not, not very well and how we can support them in getting back into work. Um, so I think where he saw that he was just like, you know, it seems like you've got a passion for this and you're really good at it so what he did is he kind of helped me develop a timetable so I could actively spend time doing it right and it was a bit more actually telling the rest of the team that I was part of the leadership team as well so sort of <laughs> highlighting my position within within the uh, branch so that everyone knew that on a Sunday for example I was like the duty manager and that they could come to me if they had any issues and he really gave me the power to just make the decision like what's the worst that can happen you get it wrong but actually when you get it wrong you learn from it um, but I'm happy for you I trust you to make that decision so it was just giving me the confidence I think to say you know what is it they say um ask uh, forgiveness not permission so I think that was a real mantra of his and and you know that's what I live by most of the time <laughs> excellent and you know that there is something very true isn't there about being able to get it wrong so that you can learn um, and I think a lot of people that uh, come on our courses are afraid to make those mistakes. Could you share a couple of mistakes that have really helped you to learn so that people get a feel for what that's like? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think where I'm really ambitious and, and, and you know, I really want things done quickly. Um, I suppose early on in my career, I could come across as a little bit impatient and maybe not as understanding with people. Um, and so sometimes that would kind of disengage people. And that's been my biggest learn, actually. I wouldn't be on the journey I'm on now. I wouldn't be doing what I was doing now if it wasn't for the people that were working with me and around me. Um, and early on, I definitely made some mistakes where I was kind of maybe pushing people a bit harder than what they were used to or um, maybe not going about it in the right way. Um, so, you know, I, I, you know, people told me, um, you know, um, people people were quite honest with me, which was really good. And actually made me really look at my leadership style and how um, I probably when I started had one leadership style, which was just, you know, this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to do it. Um, and actually two things that have really helped me develop is becoming a listening volunteer at Samaritans. I am a much better listener for that, but also just the feedback that people were giving me and actually really taking that time to reflect. And again, in the past, I've had line managers that have really spent some time with me um, to the point where I had one line manager. We used to have a weekly call to discuss kind of, you know, what things had you done in the week, what went well and what didn't go so well so that I had that reflection time that I possibly wouldn't give myself otherwise. Um, and I think that's what the, my biggest learn is taking people on the journey with me. And, and you know, the feedback I get from people now is that I'm so engaging and I'm so inclusive. Um, so obviously I have developed to that part of myself. Absolutely. And I think you touched on the point then of listening. And I think from my observations, that's something that a lot of new managers fail to do. And it's also quite interesting that we have two ears and one mouth. And I always say that the proportion is you listen for twice as long as as you speak. How has developing those listening skills really helped you? Um, I think it is exactly what you said, like developing those listening skills. And it's not just about listening with your ears and hearing words. It's also looking at body language, which, of course, with COVID, where we've gone virtual, it's not quite the same. But I think you can still tell by somebody if they're maybe not the same as they normally are, if they're not um, kind of um, as, as, as energetic as they normally are. And it's just taking that into account that if you're sort of piling on work onto a colleague, but they, you know, they've just spent some time telling you how their little one wasn't very well last night, it really makes me stop to think, actually, you know what, they probably haven't had much sleep. It, they would be more productive if they maybe had a bit of time to just rest and maybe I can give them something really light to do that they're you know, doing in the background, etc. Um, so I think the listening bit is around listening to body language, listening to what words people are saying but then doing something about that listening so not just listening ignoring it and carrying on with your your path as you was going to um but actually listening and saying right do i need to adapt what we're going to be doing because of what they've just told me i think adaptation is key isn't it rather than sticking to one one way of doing things have you got a couple of examples where you or what, an example where you could share with us where you've listened and adapted and done something that's led to something quite significant as a result? Um, I think it's around um, I used to have someone that that worked for me that kept telling me that they couldn't do a course because they didn't feel that their English was good enough to do. Um, and for me i've always been very much like no you can do it and you know um go for it and never hold yourself back and never tell yourself you're not good enough um and i guess what i really missed is how worried this person was about it um and whilst i was thinking oh but you know this is brilliant I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity you should be taking that opportunity it got to the point where this person got really quite anxious about it and i don't know if i recognized that um mm -hmm. as early on in the process as i should have um but actually um once i did sort of kind of see and i think it was more the body language that was just you know this person isn't isn't as bubbly as they normally are when they're doing their job and they, they don't seem happy they seem quite worried and slightly withdrawn um and just having that kind of conversation with them and and sort of you know taking them out for a coffee having a conversation and said tell me a bit about you know how you're feeling about work at the moment and they were they were really honest with me which probably to be fair they had been but because we were saying it in a setting that was outside of a fleeting conversation while I was passing them you know where we worked or um I think I was able to really take that time to listen and um, actually, the person did go on to do the course. They excelled. They were brilliant. But what happened is when they were telling me how nervous they were about their English, I kind of just explained that that's something that we could tell the course leader and 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 we could 
you know, do some extra sessions if that was going to be something that was difficult. Um, and we, we said that we'd support that person. And, you know, they uh, just, uh, both of us have left that organisation now. Um, but, you know, I still meet that person regularly and we catch up for a coffee every so often. I say regularly, it's probably only about once a year, actually, by the time we actually get a date in the diary. Um, but they now work in the school and they always say to me, like, you know, it was the best thing that I ever did doing that course. So, you know, that that is something to be really proud of. But actually, it, it, that story wasn't wasn't a smooth journey. Mm, no, I'm sure. And I think honesty, you touched on it there, having the courage to listen and have a, an, an honest conversation with people is very powerful indeed, isn't it? Definitely. So do you think that women lead differently from men? You did say, allude to that uh, at the beginning when we were talking about you being a, a bossy when, when you were younger. But do you think it's real or do you think it's a bit of a smoke screen that some people put up I do think women lead differently and I think we can we can gain positives from from all of that and and possibly negatives as well um but I, I definitely think that women lead differently I think that's just natural in life that there's a different way that we look at something like emotional intelligence I think women um can be more empathetic um they can maybe see the bigger picture um I also think that people work differently for men and women. Um, so, you know, and, and just from experience, you know, a man's got a vision, tells you what to do. You just all get on and do it. A woman has a vision, um, puts a bit more heart into the, into it. And I'm not saying that a man doesn't do that. I've worked with some amazing um, men in my career. Um, but I think definitely, um, yeah, I, d I think there's a definite difference. And I think also what's coming about now which is not something that really i've dealt with in the past is actually you know women have different needs from a sort of um you know um like menopause and uh, menstruation and actually looking at cycles and how moods might be of people that is going to affect it affects the rest of your life so why wouldn't it affect your working life and that's not really something I've ever stopped to think about you just get on with it every day and you just do what you need to do um but actually I think people are having much more open conversations about that now and it'd be really interesting to sort of have you know trackers to kind of just see you know, productivity maybe at each time of the month for for, for mm -hmm. a woman. Um, and actually, what can we do in workplaces to make sure that we're getting the best from women when we can? Um, and I guess supporting them when maybe, or giving them a workload that's a bit different, for example, at, at certain times of the month, or, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that we're friendly when it comes to sort of um, menopause. And, you know, I think that's really important. And that's not something actually that's ever been explored before. But we know we know that outside of work, that does affect things. So why would it not in work? No, absolutely. And it's not like we become a completely different person when we put on our work clothes and step into our work role, is it? We're still human beings with a whole life going on around us. Exactly. So as you were kind of starting your career, who were the role models um, for you, would you say? Um, my role models, I guess, were other leaders within the organisation that I worked for. You know, I, I kind of um, found some leaders that I thought I really like the way they lead. And, I, you know, I really want to sort of aspire to be at that level and to be able to, I guess, engage people the, the way they have as well. Um, and I've had that throughout my career. I found some amazing people. I mean, recently, actually, I went out with the chief medical officer of North East London and we only spent half a day together. Um, but I now follow them on social media. And, um, you know, I've really been reflecting on he's the most engaging person. He is so enthusiastic and um, his leadership style seems amazing. And I've not been in a, um, I guess, in a position where he's line managing me or actually, you know, giving me a workload to do as such. Um, but I just see the way he is with people. And recently I've just been like, oh, my God, I'm kind of blown away by this person, this uh, chief medical officer from North East London. Um, and so I think for me, you know, I think there's always people that inspire you in different ways as you, you know, go through your journey. Um, I've had some amazing um, women who are, I guess, kind of friends and have been working with me that have um, encouraged me to go for something that I didn't think I was able to go for. And, and an example is the um, LPC job. Um, I was like, oh, I won't be able to do that. Oh, you know, it's it's out of my reach. It's not really for me. No, I can't do that. And actually I had... Um, um, 
a couple of women that would just like go for it what have you got to lose go for it and it's actually my favorite job and it's the best thing I've ever done um so you know people are so important and I do have to say like my parents have really inspired me like their work ethic is amazing um you know the the, the relationships they built up within the community um because they had a news agent um and I guess how helpful they are to their customers I think uh, and like I said, that's now their, their friend circle and their community. Um, they've really inspired me my whole journey because, yeah, they've been amazing. Well, that's brilliant. But our roots are so important. And I think they're quite often overlooked uh, as we go through our career. So in terms of you, you talked a bit about being hesitant about going f- for this job. What was it you found inside of yourself? that helped you to do that other people were encouraging you but what what did you find inside of you I'm not sure that I did I think it was the fact that other people were encouraging me and I just thought do you know what like what's the worst that can happen you don't get it like that is literally the worst thing that can happen <laughs> and you might feel a bit embarrassed that you went for a job that was out of your league but what I um um, I listen to quite a few podcasts and um, Elizabeth Day does an, an amazing podcast on um, it's called How to Fail. And you just think about the difference again between men and women. So when women tend to go for a job, they want to tick off every little bit of the job criteria that it's asking mm-hmm. for. When men go for it, they tick off a couple and go, yeah, I could do that job um, and, and, you know, apply for it because there's just that inner confidence um there um so I just said for once I'm not going to not going to worry that I'm not hitting every box that they that they need I'm going to go for it I'm going to go for the interview and I and I actually then took each each step at a time so the first thing was the application did that and got through to the interview stage the next stage was preparing for the interview did that and then obviously got the job and then the real panic set in because I was like I really don't know if I'm going to be able to do this um but actually um you know for me it was just really important reaching out I love chatting as you may have realized um so just making sure that early on when I started the job because I actually did it in Kent first for a couple of years before I moved to North East London um making sure that I was reaching out and and really using the network around me to say help me with this asking open questions um and you know again I didn't feel that I couldn't do that because I was new to the role. I think what is more difficult is later on you feel a bit like, oh, can I do that? Or will they think I don't know? But actually, I've really moved away from that because if you don't ask, you're not going to know. Then you're more likely to get it wrong and and that won't be good. <laughs> you touched on what people are in the uh, talking about quite a bit at the moment, imposter syndrome. You know, am I really able to do this or somebody will catch me out? Um, could you talk us through what that means for you? Yeah, it's really funny. So um, we had the pharmacy show uh, this weekend and I was asked to um, kind of go on five sort of presentations, um, sessions and panels. Um, And, you know, there was someone there that kept saying, you know, I don't know why I'm here with all of you. But I was also thinking, I don't know why I'm here because (laughs) there is that imposter syndrome. Mm. Um, And I think there's two there's two parts to it I think when you find something you're really passionate about and you love some of that imposter syndrome does go away because I I absolutely love the job I do now um and actually I'm seeing results I think when you love something right you put your heart and soul into it and that passion often drives results and so where I'm getting the results now I'm like well actually I must be doing a good job because I'm getting the results people are coming to me asking me how to do this people are wanting to know what I've done um so I think some of that imposter syndrome has gone away but I think sometimes where it moves away from from a work situation um I was in a voluntary role um I uh, was a branch director uh, for Samaritans I had it nailed in the three years I was doing a great job I've now been given um, a national role and there is a bit of imposter syndrome there on how did I get this role how do <laughs> I like sort of take this forward um and a bit of me is going I'm not sure what, what they're talking about in that meeting um but again it's just about asking questions sometimes reading around the subject I think you've got to develop the confidence within yourself. And for me, the way I do that is by knowledge. So if I don't know something, I have to go and learn about it or read about it. And then knowing that I know about it makes me feel I've got the knowledge and actually I am worthy of being here. So it's a cycle of learning the way you just described it. Brilliant. So what would you like to be remembered for in your leadership roles or your career? I'd like to be remembered for the person that 
that helps as many people as possible. So for me, it's around helping other people who are in their career. Um, you know, we talked a lot this weekend about women in leadership. And I think, you know, I, I want to be that woman who climbs up the ladder, but then reaches down to help other people get up that ladder as well, not the person that pulls up the ladder behind me and, and mm -hmm. you know, leaves the person on the ground. Um, but I want to do that for both men and women. Um, I want to do that for anyone who's aspiring to um, do anything, whether it's in their voluntary role um, or whether it's in a, a work capacity. Um, I want to know that everything I do, both again in voluntary and my work capacity, is helping lots of people. So the way I see it is I, I, I represent 300 uh, plus pharmacies. Um, all those pharmacies help their communities. So for me, I'm helping people and pharmacies and businesses to be the best that they can be so that they can help their local communities. Um, so for me, it's around really making that impact around people and knowing that, you know, I've helped millions and millions of people, whether it's directly or through, I suppose, supporting others to be the best that it can be so they can help them. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So what piece of advice would you give somebody who's starting out and who's wobbly at the moment? I'd say persevere. I'd say persevere um, and, you know, reach out to the people that you can trust and confide in. Tell them how you're feeling because you'd be surprised at what you're feeling about yourself is often very different to what other people are feeling about you. Um, I would also say, though, go with your gut instinct. Um, I think that is so important. Your gut tells you everything. And if you know something's really not right for you, then it's OK to walk away and say, this is not right for me. I need to look for something different. I know that's not always possible for financial reasons, et cetera. But actually, you know, if you are in a position to be able to do that, then sometimes it's the right thing to do. But give it your all before you do that. Try try as hard as you can um, and really really create that network around you because you know when you're when you're having a bad day or when you're not feeling great there are people I can pick up the phone to often you know previous people that I've worked with and kind of um, have a wobbly recently I had to um, do a presentation in front of 400 people and actually uh, you know this far in my career I've never had to do something like that so I reached out to an old line manager of mine who's a really good friend now um, and just kind of went all right help me I'm feeling really nervous about it and it was just kind of he gave me lots of advice but he also also told me how great I am, which gave me the confidence to know that I can do this. Um, and then just on the, you know, the day before, he was like, good luck with it tomorrow. Um, and even asked me how it went. And it's, I think it's like that, isn't it? Knowing that you've got someone that's got your back. Um, so make sure you find those people that have your back. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. And it seems it's all about people, really, isn't it? And being a person and acknowledging you're a person and helping other people, because by helping other people, you grow yourself. Absolutely, yeah. I've really enjoyed the conversation with you this morning. Thank you very much, Shilpa. Me too. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.